what is false doctrine false doctrine is anything taught that is not in the word of god anything that is not in the word of god or if it is in the word of god it is changed so that it can it can fit the intentions or the purpose of the preacher false doctrine is anything that is not in the word of god that is not inspired by the holy spirit and we can see in the book of uh, first timothy uh, second timothy chapter 4 verse 3 the bible says they will say this wrong first uh, second timothy sorry that is first timothy second timothy chapter 3 verses 4 verses 3 4 3 and says this is for Paul to Timothy for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teachings they will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear they will reject the truth and chase after mates but you should Keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering, for the Lord, for the Lord, work at uh, work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given to you. And this is what I'm doing today. I'm continuing to spread the good news and the truth that God has given me. So you can see that Paul was speaking to Timothy, telling that at is coming when people will divert from the Saudi doctrine and they will go looking for false teachers who will tell them what their ears want to hear and you see today in real life application people look, uh, are looking for microwave blessings and microwaves miracles and they are not there what they end up with they end up with false doctrines that will frustrate them and at the end they will either die or lose property or lose people and that is the cause or that is the result of false doctrine when it enters into the mind of a person there is another scripture in the book of uh, second john chapter second john chapter uh chapter two verse seven the bible says I say this because many deceivers have gone out into the world. They deny that Jesus Christ came in the real body. Such a person is a deceiver and an antichrist. So you see, even John was writing to the church, telling them that many have gone out preaching that Jesus did not come uh, uh, from the, the real body or uh, the God. There was a false the first teachers who are spreading the gospel in the times of God that the Messiah we are waiting for he is not going to come as a normal human being because he is a God but you see John is telling them that Jesus had to come in the form of a human beings so that he can encourage each uh, every man that if Jesus made it at the cross we can also make it and you see now, he is saying, anybody who will deny this fact, he is an antichrist. So, we can know that, that the cause of false doctrines is the antichrist. And the antichrist is the devil himself who releases the spirit of antichrist. Watch out, verse 8. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked so hard to achieve. So you see the purpose of the devil using the spirit of Antichrist against the Christians is to convince them, is to draw them out of the true gospel so that he goes to perish with them in the lake of fire. And point number two, so that they may lose their reward. Be diligent so that you receive your full reward 
so you see he is encouraging us to stay in the truth when you stay in the truth the bible says that we are going to receive our full reward the purpose of the enemy using false teachings is to rob people their right uh, their right the blessings in christ because you see in verse, in verse 10 the bible says if anyone comes to you to your meetings and does not teach the truth about christ do not divide that person into your home or give any kind of encouragement anyone who encourages such people becomes a partner in their evil work so you see when you invite them when you listen to them and you give your offering to them automatically you connect and some people are wondering why are people convinced and they cannot see that they are being caught even a child that three year old can see this is a false teacher why because now when you connect to them these people are not using the holy spirit the bible says is the the antichrist he is, he is using the spirit of antichrist this is the spirit that is manipulating people their minds and their everything he is capturing their soul a soul is made up of mind will and emotions imagine the three issues have been captured this is the, the true man when your mind is captured you cannot think straight that means there's a demon in you that is thinking, thinking or, or, or forcing you to think so you find that you are well you cannot make any decision upon yourself so that means that the man remains a captive that man remains a slave that is where you find even if you tell them that this pastor is calling you this servant this shepherd is calling you they will defend them and you end up being the bad one why because they are not in the right mind so be very careful and we have seen when you connect yourself when you help them that is the point of contact that they are using your eyes are the gates your ears are the gates your finances are the gates they are the point of contact the enemy will use whenever you open your tv you are watching the first teacher automatically you connect whenever you hear whatever when you are hearing them you are connecting to them so i de- i lay my sokata i encourage you be careful what you are saying be careful what you are hearing be careful who you are giving your finances and i want us to go straight up to what what causes wrong doctrines what causes wrong doctrines and number one we have seen it is the enemy the time is a, a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound doctrine sorry in the book of second john the bible says the deceiver and an antichrist antichrist is the enemy he is releasing the spirit of antichrist and point number two is hero worship hero worship i'm a human worship this is where people are worshiping their 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 their, their, their shepherds or their pastors or their bishop you find that these people they are they can do anything to please their pastors or their shepherd they fear them more than they fear god and remember in the book of acts chapter 10 verse 25 when uh, peter went to Cornelia, Cornelius. When Cornelius he saw Peter at the door, he bowed down and knelt. But Peter took his hand and lifted him. He told him, I am just a normal being. Also remember, when they did the miracles, people came to honor and to worship them, saying that the gods have come. Peter, they refused to be worshipped. But look at what is happening to them. Whenever a sermon by the power of the Holy Spirit, because a church Jesus is the head. When the Holy Spirit comes and he manifests, the demons begins to manifest. People tend to show that they are. It is by their power that they are doing this. They are forcing congregations to believe in them. They are not appointing people to 
Jesus, they are pointing people to themselves. So you find that the congregation will realize, ah, this man is powerful. I'm from there. Fear enters them. I'm from there. They begin to worship them. They can do anything. The man of God is commanding them to do, not realizing that they are under a false teacher. They are receiving false doctrine. So people are worshiping men later than God. They fear people more than God. So that is the cause of uh, 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 false doctrine. And point number two, not understanding the difference between Old Testament and the New Testament. So you find there are people who say that we don't read Old Testament. And others say we don't read Old Testament, New Testament. You find that if you don't study the Old Testament, this is the foundation. The Old Testament is a shadow of a real thing to come. For instance, in the Garden of Eden, when man is sinned, in the mind of God, redemption was through blood. So you find an animal was uh, uh, must die for Adam and Eve to be covered. The act of covering for the sins of Adam, blood must be poured. And that is why God had to sacrifice the life of another animal so that Adam and Eve receive growth. The act of covering their sins in the Old Testament, it is called atonement. Atonement means to cover. And that is why even in the tabernacle, every family, every year, had to bring a goat so that they could sacrifice and atone for their sins. But now, person like that who does not read the New Testament, look now, Jesus in the book of Hebrews paid the ransom. He became the highest price for all. John said, the old, the lamb of God came. The lambs that were being sacrificed in the Old Testament, Jesus offered himself as a lamb once and for long. And from there, we don't have to sacrifice every year. Ah, in our churches. So you find that when you connect yourself through Jesus' sacrifice at the cross, you are born again and you have received eternity once and for all. Your sins have been taken away completely. You have a new book which is empty. But in the Old Testament, your sins have piled up. Every year, you bring atonement sacrifice. You cover. Your sins are always there. And that is why no one in the Old Testament qualified to go to heaven. Why? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot go to the Father without Jesus. And there's no sacrifice that of animals or money or anything that you can paid for your soul to be delivered except a soul of a deity who is God be sacrificed on that altar so that other souls of men can be delivered so if you don't understand the old new testament you find yourself and in that danger if you are there ex excelling in the area of grace you find that you have a problem because now you'll Take the works of Jesus at cross in vain. And that is why you need to look from the Old Testament. Look at the people who could not afford sheep or gold. Jesus came, even Jesus himself, when he was being dedicated, he could not afford a sheep or a lamb. They went with the doves, imagine. But now, in the New Testament, when you don't understand the price, Jesus paid. That is why people are choking with the salvation and they are killing the power of the cross by the issue of false doctrines of grace. Grace is not allowing you to sin because there is blood. You carry grace because Jesus died for you on the cross. And also, uh, number three, we can say what causes wrong doctrines is wrong interpretation of scriptures. 
wrong interpretation of scriptures when you don't interpret the scriptures in the correct way you find that the spirit of antichrist will catch you because you are believing something that is not inspired by the Holy spirit and for instance the book of second timothy chapter 2 verses 15 timothy was told by uh, paul work hard so you can present yourself to god and receive this approval be a good worker one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth this is a message to timothy from paul show yourself approved why because you have studied the word of god and you are able to interpret the word of god correctly to people this was the advice of the, or, or to timothy and how can you interpret the word of god correctly this is what we call historical context in the historical context this is where this is where you look at the author who wrote that chapter that you are studying and the date the date that it was written and to whom it was written to and also capture the customs or the cultures at that particular day when it was written and also look at the problem the other wanted to solve so that now you can connect it to the present if you don't do that you will diagonize or you will sculpture the scripture wrongly and for instance in the book of second timothy we know that our order number one we have said look at the order so you find that the order of this book is timothy uh, sorry the order of this book is paul and the original audience was timothy he was a son of paul he was a disciple of paul so he was trying to write to him so that he can grow he can grow spiritually and the year it was written it was 64 a.d from rome or macedonia so you find the other point is the problem the other wanted to solve it is the issue of false doctrines so if he was trying to to solve the issue of false doctrines in our times now the year 2023 do we have the same problem of false doctrines yes and that is why i am releasing this to someone there who will understand if you are under the false teachings that is why i am releasing this to you so that you can get out of them so that the lord can receive you you can see the greatest issue that we have in our country right now the issue of shakahola this is because of false doctrine people who received false doctrines and they are now victims so proper hermeneutics upon the scriptures we do historical context that is the order the date it was written the audience cultures and customs at that particular season and also problem the author tried to solve then come into the present and see what what is the problem that you wanted to solve why are you presenting your scripture or the verse that you are preaching and from there we will avoid that wrong interpretation of scriptures and we will be out of false doctrines and the other point number five is spiritual laziness oh, oh. people are lazy entirely lazy they are just looking for a teacher the verse that we have read they are looking for someone for a teacher who will tell them what their itchy ears wanted to hear 
people don't want to pay the price of taking or buying a Bible and studying. They are judging goers. They just want to look for a pastor who will pray for them, who will teach them what. And not the teaching. Preach. People want preachings. Why preachings? Because preachings are inspiring. Preachings are immotivating. You don't take your mind into task. Your mind is not tired. Trying to figure out how that scripture is going to work. What is my part? That is the work of teachings. And that is why many people don't like teachings. They like preachings. Preachings are like grass fire. You receive it very strongly inside the church. But when you go outside, the devil and the demons are already there waiting for you. And you find that there is nothing that is changing in your life. But when you understand the scripture, like the one we are starting to do, you know the cause that is the spirit of Antichrist. It is the devil. Why? Because he wants to throw men to himself. Why? Because he wants to draw disciples to himself. Because he wants you to miss your heavenly reward. Because he wants you to go to hell with him. You will stand your gap and resist the enemy. And the last one, as I finish, the evil motive when you are entering into ministry. Those who are entering into ministry with an evil motive of making business or having an empire, you will end up teaching wrong doctrine so that you can remain to yourself. And that is the end of our teachings today. We were looking at the first doctrine and we have diagnosed a dim scripture which is Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. If I may read again as I finish. For a time is coming now when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teachings. They will follow their own desire and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. And that is what is happening today in our country around the world. People are looking for those false teachers who are going to tell them what their ears want to hear. And we have seen also in the book of Second John, Second John chapter 2 from verse 7, the cause of the order manufacturer of this uh, false doctrines is the enemy. The wrongest one is the enemy. And he is doing this because he is using the spirit of Antichrist. We are using the Holy Spirit. He is using the spirit of Antichrist. So before I finish, I want to pray with someone now who is under manipulation, who is under that order. And I know, I have faith that God is going to deliver you. And before I finish, next we are going to see how can you know that you are under a false teacher or false doctrines. You are in their authors. Why? Because for instance, a person who has received Jesus from those authors, he is under those manipulations. He is under error. He does not do, know a pure gospel. He knows that this is the pure gospel. But now, Jesus said that you will know them by their fruits. But even though you are there and you can see it, this, this is spirit that is manipulating you. What you need is a, source, uh, is a sound spirit. The spirit of the Lord who will come because the Bible says that gospel has power. Right now as I am preaching, the word of God through the Holy Spirit is opening your eyes, is releasing red flags in the ministry that you are serving under the man of God. He is releasing red flags because he wants to deliver you. Let me pray for you. Next topic is how to know that you are under first nature. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come right now. In the name of Jesus, each and every person that is under the influence of a false doctrines, I put them down now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that they are free in the name of Jesus. Each and every false teacher.
Elijah, my father, my God, each and every evil spirit that they are using to manipulate your children, my God, I declare the blood of Jesus now. Release your angels, my father, to set your people free out of captivity as you delivered your children from Egypt, my God, from the hand of Pharaoh. You release your hand, my God, all oh, to deliver your people. Release your hand today, my God, to deliver your people out of those evil orders, out of those evil teachers, out of those evil false teachers, my God, in the name of Jesus. Nantankaza siku ya leo, watoto wako wakafungurue, wakaweke huru, katika jina la Yesu, tumeomba atana kuamini. Amen. You are there, you have not received Jesus as your personal Savior. It is only through receiving Jesus that you will be free. I want you to pray with you, say, Lord Jesus, I come before thee. I am a sinner. Forgive me. I raise my names from the book of death and write it in the last book of life. Today, I accept you as my personal Savior. And on the last day, remember me, Lord. Amen. Father, we worship you. We say thank you for those who have received you. Deliver them, O Lord, from the hands of their woes. My Father and my God, open their ears, open their eyes, O my God, so that they may receive the true gospel, my Father, my God. We worship you, Father, and we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom, Pastor Dennis.